Hello and welcome to the SAP Business One Integration System Demo. We will be covering the integration possibilities that are available with SAP Business One. SAP Business One's product offering covers four areas starting with the SAP Business One ERP core functionalities. With SAP Business One running on the SAP HANA in-memory database platform, functions such as analytics and high performance scalability are introduced. SAP Business One can be an on-premise install solution or can be implemented as a cloud-based solution, both of which offer mobile integration to key stakeholders showing key information within SAP Business One anywhere you have a mobile device. The area that we will talk about at a high level will be the key integration solutions available for SAP Business One and the ease in which you can integrate your business data. SAP Business One is an all-inclusive solution. SAP Business One core functionality, as stated, is available both on-premise or cloud-based. Regardless of how SAP Business One is implemented, you have the same integration options available. We will discuss the extensibility layer from the diagram consisting of the SAP Business One SDK and Studio, the integration framework, and the service layer. Let's start by looking at the SAP Business One software development kit. The SAP Business One SDK is a set of APIs that allow for integration with SAP Business One at a data and user interface level. The SAP Business One core functionality is kept separate and access to data in and out of SAP Business One is through the two APIs. The DI API or Data Interface API allows access to SAP Business One data through the use of object-oriented programming such as BB.NET, c -sharp, and many others that can interact with COM Object. The DI API can be used to programmatically integrate external business systems. Available business objects consist of master data and transactional data types and allow for add, update, and delete. The same business logic used for data validation by SAP Business One is utilized by the DI API. The UI API or User Interface API is used to modify existing SAP Business One system forms and or create new forms to SAP Business One as well as capture system events programmatically. The UI API allows for the ability to change existing system forms as shown here as well as add new forms, add, modify, and remove menu items, and control the flow of applications. Examples would be to add new fields or buttons to a system form such as sales orders. We can also create our own forms that have the same look and feel as an SAP Business One form. This allows for a seamless user experience. Key benefits of the SAP Business One SDK are a flexible tool set built on proven industry standards. It's easy access to functionality in SAP Business One through a true business layer with full access to Business One functionality. A user interface API that allows us to add windows, modify existing windows, and respond to UI events. You can also leverage your team's existing programming skills such as VB, C++, Java. Therefore, there's no need to learn any proprietary languages and you can use industry standards that your team's already built skills on. Now let's look at the development tools that are available to help streamline the creation of integrations with SAP Business One and the SAP Business One SDK. SAP Business One Studio Suite is a state-of-the-art development platform for SAP Business One extensions that dramatically improves development efficiency. It provides an effective, integrated development environment to develop extensions on top of SAP Business One. SAP Business One Studio consists of two editions, SAP Business One Studio and SAP Business One Studio from Microsoft Visual Studio. The SAP Business One Studio is geared towards technical IT, UI designers, and consultants, allowing for easy creation of new or modifying existing forms. SAP Business One Studio from Microsoft Visual Studio is geared towards the developers as it is tightly integrated with Microsoft Visual Studio and .NET and allows for code generation. You can use SAP Business One Studio to open SAP Business One system forms in edit mode, modify the existing controls and logic, or add new controls and forms. You can also design your own forms. 
You can use SAP Business One Studio to open SAP Business One system forms in edit mode, modify the existing controls and logic, or add new controls in your forms. You can also design your own forms. SAP Business One Studio not only contains all the functionalities of Screen Painter, but also enhances the functionalities and optimizes the usability of the Screen Painter. You can use SAP Business One Studio integration with Microsoft Visual Studio. There are widgets for the creation of add-on products for Visual Basic and C Sharp. This interface would be used by developers and streamlines the development process even further as much of the code for the UI and DI is generated for you. Let's look at a quick demo of the SAP Business One Studio. You can see I'm already logged into SAP Business One. To access the SAP Business One Studio, I'll go ahead and click on Tools, SAP Business One Studio Suite. You'll notice that I have two options. In the case of this demo, I'm going to choose the SAP Business One Studio option not integrated with Microsoft Visual Studio. Once the studio launches, you'll see where I am presented with options on my start page. In my case, I'm going to choose simply Create Add-on. I'm now presented with a new project window where I will enter my project name of sample add-on. You'll note that the folder is defaulted to where the sample add-on.b1s file will be created. You can make changes as needed and then simply click OK. You're now presented with the main SAP Business One Studio Design window. You can see I have different options, Toolbox, UI Outline, Solution Explorer, and the Properties window. I'm going to expand the UI controls and data source options because we're going to use those in the demo. The example here is to create a form that when opened will give the option of entering a business partner co code or looking up the business partner code from a list, then choosing a business partner, then clicking on the link to or golden arrow and being taken to that business partner record. So let's go ahead and start this. From the UI control area, I'm going to need three specific UI controls. I'm going to need what's called static text, which I'll drag and drop onto my form. I'm going to need a link to button, and I'm going to need an edit text. The first thing I'm going to do is on my label, in my properties window, I'm going to change the caption from being label one to BP code. And you'll notice when I click on the form, is now BP code. Next, what I'm going to do is I need a data source to choose from. So I'm going to double click on data source. You'll notice it's put down here. And I also need to choose from list option. I'll double click. It's also put down to this area. And we'll define those shortly. In the properties window for the form itself, you'll notice when I click, I now have a properties window. In the object type field, I'm going to enter a unique ID for this particular form. Since it has to do with business partners and the business partner master via the BO object type field is two, I'm just going to go ahead and enter a two here. Now on the choose from list properties, I'm going to go ahead and click that. In the object type field, which you can see here, I'm going to enter a two. Again, in the SDK help information, you'll find out that for BO object types, number two represents the business partner master. Now in the DB data source properties, I will click on that, and I'm going to define which table to get the business partner information from. You'll notice here I have a field name. I highlight it, delete it, and type in OCRD, which happens to be the business partner table. Now I need to connect the link to button with the actual business partner code edit text field. So I'm going to click on the link to button. You'll notice now I get my properties. In the link to field, I need the unique ID of the edit text field above. So when I choose my link to field, I could either enter the unique ID, or of course I can choose from the drop down and choose item number two. Now item number two, where that comes from, is if I highlight my edit text field, you can see where it shows me item two. So back to my linked arrow. The next thing will be in the linked object. I'll scroll down. You'll notice I have linked object. Now I need to link that again to the business partner master. So in this case, I'll type in number two. The next thing I need to do is bind my DB data source to the BP code edit text field, which is here. 
So I'll click on the Edit Text field to get my Properties window. And in the Data Source field, you'll see here, I can click on the drop down and you'll notice I have my OCRD. I'm going to go ahead and choose that because I want to link it to my partner code. You can also see in the alias field, I have the ability to enter an alias for this. In this case, I'm going to enter card code, which is the key field for the business partner master record. Now I need to connect the choose from list with the BP code in the edit text field itself. In the properties field for the edit text, which we're still on, in the choose from list UID, which in the properties window will be here, you can see choose from list UID, which I'll click on. I'm going to enter the ID of the choose from list. So again, I'll click on the drop down. I'm picking the choose from list, which is the CFL zero in this case. Then in the choose from list autofill, autofill field, I'm going to choose that to be true. Click on here, choose true. And then finally, from the choose from list alias, I'm going to enter card code. Now the final step will be to actually go ahead and preview this. So if I click on the preview in SAP Business One Client icon, you'll see where I have a new form that's been created in SAP Business One. You'll see two of the fields that I've created. You don't see the link arrow yet. The link arrow will show up, of course, when I click on my list of business partners, which I built. It's looking up in the OCRD table. This is a list of my business partners. You'll notice when I click Earthshaker Corporation and choose, now I have my golden arrow or my link to arrow that shows up. When I click on the golden arrow, it takes me immediately to the business partner master record where I can get all the information about the business partner. So this illustrates how easy it is to actually create a form within SAP Business One, in this case with no coding whatsoever. I would like to show another method of integration with SAP Business One called the SAP Business One Integration Framework. The SAP Business One Integration Framework, or B1IF, is an integration solution delivered out of the box with SAP Business One. The solution is based on the SAP Integration Platform. The SAP Business One Integration Platform supplies the integration blocks used by all the integration solutions in this category, including SAP Business One Integration for SAP NetWeaver, which is the solution for subsidiary integration, the SAP Business One Integration Framework also hosts the SAP Business One Mobile Integration for devices such as phones and tablets. And the SAP Business One Integration Framework integrates at the data level and offers real-time data integration or offline data integration. The platform allows for integration and collaboration, thereby integrating business partners, employees across system environments. Also, it unifies business processes and automates operations across the ecosystem. As shown, the main task for the SAP Business One Integration Framework is to enable SAP Business One to publish and send data to SAP systems as well as external systems and to consume and access data from any external data provider. You can see the many connectivity types available such as flat file, web services, JDBC, FTP, and many more. These are built-in connectivity types and ready for use once the solution is installed. Let's look at a demo. As previously mentioned, the integration framework is a web-based solution whereby I can administer and create new and or modify business scenarios. To access the SAP Business One integration framework, I click on Start, All Programs, Integration Solution for SAP Business One, and then the integration framework, and I'm brought to my main page. I'll enter my user ID and password. Once logged into the SAP Business One Integration Framework, you will see mainly a blank page with options at the top of your screen. We will look at three areas for this demo. System Landscape, or SLD, Scenarios, and Monitoring. Typically, the starting point is in the System Landscape Directory, or SLD. This is where you can define the different system types that you would like to integrate with SAP Business One. As stated previously, the integration framework offers many adapters or connectors to many different systems. You can see these by clicking on Create System 
and under system type, clicking on the drop down. Here you can see many different adapters, such as integrations to SAP Business One, different versions of SAP Business Suite, flat file adapters, HTTP, HTTPS, relational databases via JDBC, and web services. Let's look at one I have created. Once you choose a system type to integrate with, depending on the system, you will be asked for system information specific to that adapter. Here you can see I am asked for database information and logging credentials to be able to connect to this SAP Business One database as integrations is in real time without user intervention. Once the systems are set that you want to integrate, the next step would be to define scenarios. For the sake of this demo, we will look at an existing scenario by clicking on Control. Here you can see the existing scenarios such as mobile, RFQ, and many others. We're going to look at RFQ, or Request for Quote, and clicking on Overview. Here you see a graphical representation of the scenario. At the start, a web form is pushed out to define business partners in SAP Business One. The business partner fills out and submits the web form back to SAP Business One. Later, a response from within SAP Business One generates information back to the web form where it originally started. You can see that there are many steps involved, and you can see that as part of these steps, there are many different events. By clicking on any one of these, you can see the individual components that actually build this particular set of events within this particular step. I can also view the status of any one of these scenarios by choosing monitoring. Under the message log, I can see when I click display refresh, information about those scenarios that have been successful, any failures, anything is still in processing, and anything that may be filtered. I can also look at the status of my connections by clicking on my error inbox to get an overview of all the system types that I currently have set up for integration and whether I'm successfully connected or not. These are just a few of the areas used while modifying or building integration scenarios using the SAP Business One integration framework. The key benefits of the SAP Business One integration framework are its ease of use, where we do not require knowledge of programming languages such as VB.NET, C Sharp, Java, etc. We use industry standards such as XML and XSLT for customizations. We have built in ready to use connectivity types such as flat file, web services, HTTP, and so forth. The ability to integrate and standardize operations and data across the business ecosystem administration and development using a graphical web interface, and predefined out-of-the-box business scenarios such as mobile subsidiary integration between SAP Business One and SAP Business Suite and intercompany transaction processing. Let's have a look at the newest integration with SAP Business One and SAP HANA, the service layer. The SAP Business One service layer is specific to SAP HANA and is a new integration solution for SAP Business One. The service layer exposes SAP Business One objects, like in the DIAPI that we covered earlier, but using HTTP and OData or Open Data Protocol web services. In this way, SAP Business One business logic is exposed via OData and compiled in Linux. The service layer supports high volume throughput as well as multi-threading capabilities. Currently as stated, the service layer is only available for SAP HANA. While SAP Service Layer is specific to HANA, the SAP Business One Studio SDK and SAP Business One Integration Framework work with both SAP HANA as well as Microsoft SQL Server. The Service Layer uses HTTP requests and response back to SAP Business One following the OData protocol, which both HTTP and OData are industry standard protocols. You will also note that the payload of the response and request are in a JSON or JavaScript object notation, which is a lightweight data interchange format. It is easy for humans to read and write, and it is easy for machines to parse and generate. This slide shows an overview of OData and the various languages and database that can use OData, HTTP, and JSON. For more information on OData, you can visit odata.org. 
This also illustrates the open integration available with SAP Business One for SAP HANA and other business systems using the service layer. The advantages of using the SAP HANA and the SAP service layer allow for new applications built on industry standards which work across multiple platforms and ease application design where one application can suit many devices from desktop to mobile. Thank you for your time.